So the Lincoln Loco 3 has finished. After 15 seasons, the series has come to its conclusion. And I think we can say it's been a pretty successful season. Today, we're going to go through some of our best moments, some of the teams and things like that that we've had through the years, as well as going five years into the future to see how the team do without me, see if they can win another La Liga title. Also, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to you guys as well. Without all of you coming back every single day watching it, uh, it wouldn't have happened, wouldn't have been possible. You came back in such insane numbers every single day. Um, I'm massively thankful and grateful for that because uh, it's a big effort to come back every single day for 15 seasons. It's a long series, but you guys kept coming back. So thank you so much. Really appreciate that. So um, if I could drop a like on you guys, I would do. I'd have subscribed to you guys as well, but um, I don't know how to do that. I can't, I can't just drop a like on you, can I? So, I mean, I'd love it if you could drop a like on this video. That'd be great as well. But um, if I could drop a like on you guys, I would because I'm very grateful for all of you. Also very grateful for One Football as well. Obviously they saw the series and liked it and thought they want to sponsor me off the back of it and things like that. And um, massively appreciate One Football. Of course, today's video also sponsored by One Football, the best footballing app out there to keep up to date with all of the latest news from around the world of football, as well as keeping up to date with all of the live scores that matter to you. Get push notifications sent straight through to your phone for the teams that matter quicker than any other football app out there. It really genuinely is like the best football app out there in my opinion. Um, so I love it and I'm glad that the sponsor of the videos because it always helps when a sponsor comes in that I actually quite like. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive straight into today's video and take a look through the teams that we've had through the years and go some years into the future as well to see how they get on. So we're going to jump in where it all started off in season one of the Lincoln Loco 3. Now this is a separate save file because of course we're playing in Gibraltar at this point. When we moved to Spain, we moved into a different save file because that's the only way I can get it to work essentially. So um, this is the original save file from the very first season that we did. And this was the team that we had and all the names just come flooding straight back to me. We've got some absolute legends in this team. Joseph Cipollina, the first player to sort of stand out. What a boy he was. He was like the left back who actually played left wing, but left back who scored like 17, 16, 13 goals in a season. Only got eight for us in the league that season, but did actually get uh, 12 in all competitions. So he was a very good player, predominantly as a left back. But we absolutely loved Joseph Cipollina to the point where the formation, the Cipollina, was literally named after him to try and utilise him. We just played down the left-hand side of the pitch to try and get him to score goals, essentially. But there's other notable names in here. Kike was a great striker for us for a few years. We'll see more of him, I think, later on down the line. But he got plenty of goals for us in the league. Uh, Theo Hernandez, Anthony Hernandez, not Theo Hernandez. He's actually a very good player, isn't he? Anthony Hernandez is also a very good player. Uh, he played on the right wing for us there. Uh, Diego and Moreno in the middle. Yaya, I remember him. He came... For, he was around for quite a while, Yaya, I reckon. He was quite a decent player. I quite liked Yaya. And then we had, obviously, Roy Chiplin at the back. Ethan Brito, he stayed around, actually, until I think we were in the second division in Spain. He had quite decent potential, weirdly. Um, so Ethan Brito stayed around for quite a while. Lopez was a decent centre-back, too. I think he was one of our first big sales, I think. If I, I say big sales, probably like £10,000. But for us back then, that was an awful lot of money. And then Chino in goal as well. What a boy he was. Um, a very old goalkeeper. We had to replace him very quickly. And we got very lucky that Anthony Ward came through very quickly. So we got a good replacement for him nice and early. But yeah, this is where it all kicked off, right? I mean, it feels like going back to basics. But it feels like yesterday we started off this series. And I can remember all the names of the players. And oh, what, what a great time to start. Anyway, if we jump into the uh, the season two onwards save file from when we're in Spain, this is where it gets quite exciting. So what I'm gonna do is move myself to this corner of the screen for a change. It's very weird. Uh, normally when I'm looking at things, I'm looking at it kind of this way. So when I'm in that corner, it kind of looks like I'm looking at it, but now it looks like I'm looking like off screen, right? Rather than looking on screen, but my monitor's there kind of so that's why I'm always in that corner either way I'm not going to be in the way of the tactic screen here as you can see although I'm looking the wrong way because my screen's over there look this is why I'm always in the bottom corner so this was our first season in Spain with 21-22 season and this is when we brought in players like Randy Schneider uh, Marco Dobrievic we brought in uh, Andre Schittigel and Martel Taylor Crosdale now obviously we brought these players in for storyline and narrative but they were also brought in to make sure we didn't get relegated. We were in the lowest playable division in Spain. If we got relegated, 
that would be it. I get sacked and that would be the end of the Lincoln Loco 3 because there were no playable divisions below us. So we had to ensure that we didn't get relegated and to do that, we brought in some other players that were fairly decent for the level we were playing at. Marco Dobrjevic though, at centre-back, he was fantastic. Still playing for Proletar in Serbia right now. Of course, Marco is a real person. He was in the comment section very early on and said, sign me. So we did sign him. He came to us for a few years, played very well before going to Sabadell on a free transfer, which was kind of understandable at the time before moving to Proletar and has played there ever since. Obviously, uh, Andre Shitagel, we can talk about him later on because he's a very special player to us. But Martel Taylor Crosdale is playing for Benfica. Is he? No, Nelas, who just seemed to have the same logo as Benfica. That's a little bit bizarre. I was going to say, I'd be very surprised if he was playing for Benfica after playing for us and Salford and Bochum in Germany and gone to Portugal after that. So he's had a very fruitful career playing all over Europe, uh, not really scoring many goals since he left us or Salford. But, you know, he's probably been paid quite well, hasn't he? I mean, a 5.96 average rating over 13 games is... I mean, I'm not entirely sure how he's managed that. That's actually quite impressive. Randy Schneider, of course, he was the first... Was he the first... We sold him for half a million. I think he was the first big transfer. Nearly half a million pounds to Getafe. And then he went to Alcorcon for very cheap after that. And then to Toon in Switzerland, where he's played very well, actually, for the past few years uh, in Switzerland. So fair play to Randy Schneider. And then, of course, we had other players like Kike. Kike obviously played very well for us, playing 144 games, scoring 101 goals. We love Kike to bits. He was fantastic. It's a shame we can't see his full career in his retirement history and things like that. Uh, Lister. I don't remember Archie Lister. This name doesn't ring a bell. I mean, it should ring a bell because he scored 144 goals in 209 appearances. But he retired at the age of 25. Um, do you guys remember Archie? Why does Archie Lister... I have no recollection at all of Archie Lister. Unless he had a nickname, right? And because he's retired, the nickname's gone. That might be it. Who was like a really good striker we had early on? I might have to look back at some of this. I feel like he must have been nicknamed someone else. And I feel like because he retired, the nicknames disappeared. I should have gone, I should have made a note. Going forward, I'm going to make notes on all of the Patreon players, I think. Because I'm. he must have been. Who was he? Because there's no way I can't remember Archie Lister scoring 144 goals. He must have been called something else. Anyway, moving on to the next season. Archie Lister is once again there. Of course, whoever he was. I can't, why, oh, it's going to really frustrate me that I can't remember who it was. But either way, Archie, we love you. So thank you for scoring plenty of goals. Andre Chittigel's in there as well. We'll talk about him later on. Uh, Gabalondo, what a player he was. Uh, a good right back for us. I enjoyed Gabalondo. And of course, this was the year that Anthony Ward came into the team as well. And the rest is history. Anthony Ward was the first multi million pound man to lead the club to Valencia for 4.1 million. Never really made an impact in Valencia, unfortunately, uh, but did make a very big impact at Lille in France. The less said about that one, the better, obviously. 23 24, the striker lineup stays the same. Uh, we've got Tomic playing in the middle for us. He was a good centre mid for a few years, I remember, from Croatia. I went back to Croatia after playing for us. Uh, Eusebio Monzo has retired, but he played a good few seasons for us at centre-back. Javi Vazquez, I enjoyed him as well. We got him in from Sevilla. I don't think we ever signed him. I think he was maybe just on loan. I can't quite remember, but I did like Javi Vazquez too. If we go to the next season, this is where we start to get a few more Patreon players coming through. Because Timo Wolf, who was instrumental in us getting to the uh, there's La Liga, essentially, in that final season in the Spanish second division when we got promoted. He got 15 goals and 11 assists and then never really got that form going again in La Liga, unfortunately. 24-25 is also the start of a La Patra Cahinde, I mean, duo partnership that we got on loan for like several years. Cahinde was on loan to us for uh, five years, which was pretty exciting. Uh, La Patra was on loan to us for only three seasons, so Gehinde a little bit more, but uh, they were a solid on loan centre back for a long time. Dekene came through at this point as well, and Dekene, wow, he is probably maybe the goalkeeper of the series for us. You know, obviously we had Anthony Ward, he was great. Krent has been great as well, but Dekene was the man who stayed for the longest period of time and helped us out for the longest period of time too. So, Dekene, we will love you forever. There's also Steve Spencer in midfield. Again, this has to be a Patreon play. This is so annoying that the nicknames get like destroyed once they retire because 
that must have been a Patreon player to have 144 games for us. So again, this is rather frustrating. I need to get notes made on the players in the future of their names as well. And again, Lister up front, Spencer in the middle. It's going to frustrate me so much that I can't remember who their like Patreon names were. It's Maybe you guys in the comments can remember. Oh, I need to find this again, don't I? Ah, Lister. I've just looked at an old video. Lister is Raul Jr. I don't know why the nicknames have disappeared, but this is Raul Jr. who retired at 25. I don't remember him retiring at 25, Raul Jr., but Raul Jr. is Lister. And Scott Spencer is Scott Marshall. Scott Marshall, what a player he was as well. Um, so that's good, I can remember those names now. But you love to see it, boys. We've also got Dio Garcia at right back. It was not Dio Garcia, it was Dio Gracia or something like that. But I always call him Dio Garcia. So that's one of the names that I always got wrong. And you guys always told me in the comment section to correct it. And I always ignored you. The season afterwards, the start of the JD Meekin reign. What a player JD Meekin was. And obviously a world superstar now playing for Leipzig for a long time, scoring plenty of goals in the Bundesliga. Uh, we sold him for £15 million to Leverkusen. A year later, they doubled their money. You hate to see it. But Meekin was great. Raul Zabalaga, what a boy he was. He was instrumental in getting us promoted as well. He got 33 goals in the season that, I think, was that the season we got promoted? It must have been. That must have been the season we got promoted when he got 33 goals because that's an insane amount of goals to get. 27-28, Tapu came in. Yes, this is when we got promoted because Tapu came in to play for us. Um, oh no, actually, this was the season we got promoted. So I guess Zabalaga almost got us promoted and Tapu did get us promoted with his 12 goals and 12 assists and then was terrible in the uh, in the La Liga, essentially, which wasn't great. Uh, Lalovic was a good player for us. I enjoyed Lalovic. Um, obviously, he was on loan for a long time before we signed him and then sold him to China. Season afterwards is when Gisk came into the team. Gisk was what a what a striker Gisk was. I mean, he was fantastic, uh, scoring plenty of goals. And then we signed him permanently for £7 million, and then he was injured for about 12 months, which was really frustrating, but did get good again, scoring not many goals in the league, but did get plenty of goals in all competitions, like 16 goals in the league there, but 27 overall, which was impressive. David Perez came in. Obviously, David Perez was a great player for us for a few years, mostly on loan. Then we signed him on a free transfer and then never played him and sold him to Galatasaray for £8 million. So that was quite a good investment, I think. Joe McLean from Man United. He was very good for the two seasons that he came in as well before going to Vitesse on loan. Pascal was a great guy in the CDM. We always enjoyed Pascal. We loved him to pieces. Oh, and this, of course, is when we brought in some of the Icelandic lads as well. Because here's Hannesson at right back, who is now currently playing in China. Obviously, we sold him to China for £13 million. And then Ingerson as well, who is also playing for Hernan in China, which is quite nice. Um, we signed him for £180,000 and sold him for £12 million. Hannesson, we bought for, how much was it? £300,000, sold him for £13 million. I mean, I am literally, call me Donald Trump because that is the art of the deal. Please don't call me Trump, I don't like him. The season after that, we didn't really change too much by looks of things. Izquierdo came in. Izquierdo was a player that was frustrating because he had so much potential and then never really improved at all which was really frustrating with with him uh galena i enjoyed galena he came in on loan quite a few years didn't he he was a superb right back for us uh solid defensively stransky was great really enjoyed stransky loved him to pieces he was a great i mean he's still at the club obviously stransky right now but he was a perfectionist with great determination and stuff. He was just a great tutor for everyone. And of course, Alex from Iceland on the bench there. What a boy Alex from Iceland was. The third of the Icelandic trio, bought for £250,000, sold for £13 million to Chelsea, who didn't really do anything with him, which makes it even nicer when we get £13 million for him. Season afterwards was when Sione came in. Sione was obviously an absolute legend of the club. Sione... So many goals in so many important games as well. This season, the 30-32 season, the 31-32 season, 50 goals in all competitions. The season afterwards, only 35. That was his year. That was the year we won the Europa Conference League as well. So a huge year for Sione then. Only paid £5 million for him, which was a bargain. And then we get the rise of players like Paolo Turner and Terzi of coming through. They were great players. Paolo Turner, obviously... I'd argue one of the best players in the world. He has been absolutely incredible the past four seasons, getting huge ratings, plenty of goals, plenty of assists. Paolo Turner, 
We love you to pieces. Idrissa Ferdinand was a great free transfer that we picked up. Never really improved once we signed him, but was very good at 18 years old and sort of stayed at that. Of course, Lukau at centre-back. Lukau was a great player for us. Um, played plenty of games, got really good ratings and was solid. 32-33, this is when we moved to the two-striker system to really try and get the most out of Sione and Gisk. Obviously, Terzi have then moved to left wing. We have Paolo Turner on the right. Uh, Catania was a great player. Only had him for a short amount of time, but he was solid for us before going to £40 million to Bruce Mönchengladbach, the biggest transfer fee we ever received. And then as we move into the later seasons, you know all the players at this stage. Morelos, what a striker he turned out to be after the board signed him for £41 million following a board takeover. So many goals. He got 42 that season overall and 39 in the season that we've just played. So he was a quality striker. Not quite getting the 50 that Sione once got, though. And then, of course, uh, the previous season. Oh, well, actually, this is the overall now. We've not had the season thing for this current season. So this is apparently our overall best 11. Krenzer in goal, surprisingly. He's ahead of De Kenne. De Kenne is on the bench. De Kenne made more appearances, but Krenzer got a better average rating, interestingly. The best right back is apparently Hannison uh, alongside Lopez at the back. Oh, what a boy Lopez was back in the day. Lopez made 125 appearances for us. Uh, Gehinde is alongside him with Stransky at left back. I love this. Andre Shittigel in the CDM spot in the all-time best 11. We'll look at him shortly as well. Uh, Scott Marshall through the middle. Obviously retired now, but he was a great player in centre mids. Paolo Turner apparently playing at centre mid. Not quite sure I agree with that, but it does mean Raul Zabalaga plays on the right-hand side with Timo Wolf on the left and Sione up front. So actually, looking at this list, the top appearance maker is De Kenne, 209 appearances, and just behind him is Sione with 205 with 137 goals. That's a pretty decent ratio. I'll, I'll accept that. So there we have it. That's, that's, that's the teams that we've had, and this is the best 11. What a blast from the past some of these names are. But obviously, the one name that we can't overlook is Andre Shittigel. I feel like he's just a big presence in every save that we have. Um, he came in as a player and then became the assistant manager, which was fantastic. His uh, career stats, he started at the bottom and got all the way to La Liga. Never actually made an appearance in La Liga, which is actually really upsetting looking on that. I wish I could rectify that for you, but he came in and won plenty of trophies for us. Speaking of trophies, we managed to win one La Liga in our time at the club, as well as one Europa League 2, which was really exciting. We won the Spanish 2nd Division Pro A and the Spanish 2nd Division B, which is the 4th tier and the 3rd tier. So we never actually won the 2nd tier, which is... I guess, kind of exciting, maybe, maybe not. It says here 22 National League, but actually it's 23, because of course this is a different save file to season one. So 23 uh, Gibraltar National Leagues, we won one of those right at the start. And we also won the Cup as well, so that's 17 Cups as well, although we only ever won one of them. So technically, we did actually win a domestic Cup, just not quite the Copa del Rey. Right, so at this stage, um, I'm going to load up the save file that I've got that goes five years into the future. I'm also moving myself back to this corner as well. I feel more at home down here, so I'm back in my usual spot. So, five years into the future, it's now 2040. Let's see how this team have done. Let's look at the manager history first and foremost. So, after I resigned, Dejan Stakovic came in for two years, two and a half years basically. Who is he? He is a Serbian manager who, in his history of managerial jobs, if we can see this please. So looking at this I feel like I should recognize the name but I don't really recognize the name. Uh, started off his career in Serbia, went to Lazio and then went to Inter Milan so retired in 2012-13. By looks of things his first managerial job was of Red Star. It says he left as manager of Red Star there. It doesn't say when he joined but he left manager of Red Star there, went to Lazio, went to Tottenham. So actually we would have beaten this guy when he, because when we beat Tottenham in the cup final, we beat this guy, actually, which is quite nice. So he was then the manager, and then he came to us, which is exciting, I guess. And then his successor is Fernando Denise, who, by looks of things, is a manager in Brazil. So no wonder I've not really come across this guy before. Why can I not sort of go past 2030 as his job history? Down, down here, Federico Denise, 
You can see here manager all across different teams in Brazil, including the Brazil manager in 2030-32 and then came to us. So obviously a very good manager. Question is, have the club had any success? Well, let's have a look at the competitions and let's look at the domestic league. So we retired in 34-35 after coming second. The season afterwards, they came third, which is very good going. The next year, they dropped down to sixth in the table, and then they dropped down to eighth. And this must have been where the first guy got sacked after finishing eighth, because that is very, very poor. But the new guy has guided them to two fifth place finishes. Okay, a little bit disappointed about that. We have dropped from the top three down into, well, outside of Champions League football. So not, not the greatest. But what this does kind of suggest is the season after I left, we came third. So we still were genuinely a title challenging team. So I would be interested to see who they let go. So 34-35 was my season bringing in Ivan Chan. I don't know who this guy is. He must have been brought in on loan by the new manager or something like that. Uh, the next season then, they brought in... I, mean, I don't know why we're looking at this, really. They brought Luca Galina in. Oh, maybe we are looking at this. We, they brought Luca Galina in on a permanent deal for £33 million. So Galina is still a player. Oh, I love that. Was on loan with us for a long time and then came on a permanent deal for £43 million. That's quite expensive. Does that mean that Rask left the club? They sold Rask for £5.5 million. Rask was like a wonder kid. Why was he sold so cheaply? Oh, I'm not a fan of that. Jeremy Finley was also let go. Lukau went for £3 million. Terziev went for £8 million. Araya went for five. Right, and they've sold Rubens as well. Oh, they just... Basically, they just got rid of the defence. I can see why they dropped down the table now. The season afterwards, they raided Liverpool by looks of things. PP's a real player, right? He was at Real Madrid for a few years, wasn't he? And then Liverpool obviously in game and then to us and then Napoli. So made a significant impact actually. Made plenty of goals and assists. But we spent over £100 million on players from Liverpool. But sold £171 million worth of player. Let's sort this by value. Ah, Oscar Presedo went for £98 million. I can understand that. He was a, wow, one of the best players in the world. Look at his attributes now. They are absolutely incredible and has played phenomenally well. Oh, my God. I, that is insane how well he's played for Man City there. Look at the average ratings and look at the assists and goals. Wow. Oscar Procedo, take a bow. They also sold Ivan Chan to Juventus for £60 million, rising to £81 million, which is impressive. And Sione to Sassuolo for £10 million. That seems very cheap. I don't agree with that one, but very good money for Procedo and Chan there. The season afterwards, they sold Tyson Brown to Southampton for £5 million and they sold PP to Napoli. I don't recognise any of the names coming in, obviously, because they're all regens at this stage. Uh, the next season, uh, I don't recognise any of the names coming in. They sold Krenzer for £5 million, Quebec for 14 Junior Caesar, who is a regen. Was he one of our regens? No, we signed him at some point for, from Liverpool. One of the Liverpool boys we signed. And uh, he went back to Arsenal, clearly there. I presume this guy at the top is also a Liverpool guy. I don't recognise him at all. He came from River. Oh, interesting. Okay, and we sold him for quite a nice bit of profit. And then the 2039-40 season, which is the season that we are currently in, we sold £208 million worth of players. Paolo Turner to PSG for £117 million, who doesn't actually look as good as Procedo, and yet he was sold for an awful lot more. I mean, we've done very well to get the money for Paolo Turner there. I'm impressed. Axel Carter also went for 25 million, Ryan's for 35 million, Jeremy Finley for 6 million, and then some other names that I don't really recognise. And again, on the inside, I don't really recognise. So is there anyone here that we like have or recognise now? Um, Lucas Weber is still at the club. That's good. So is Ludek Varel. Uh, Nowak is still there. Adrisa Ferdinand is still there. Juan Morelos is still there. Kevin Cruz is still there. He was a regen coming through and then Luca Galina as well who's technically one of ours but not ours so there are still some good players there but obviously it's a very small squad for some reason not quite sure why it's so small have we won anything else if we look at the club history uh we've won three Europa Leagues now wow okay and a Spanish Cup so we ended up winning the La Liga at some point uh, La Liga uh, the Copa del Rey at some point when did we win that we won it 
in 2036-37. So two years after we lost to Real Madrid, we beat Valencia in the final, which is nice. I enjoy that. But what I'm most excited about are the two Europa League wins. When did we... We've literally just won it. We have literally just won the Europa League against Leipzig, which is really exciting. And then we won it two years before that as well. So we really are Europa League merchants. We won it once with me, but I mean, since I retired and left the club, they've actually been more successful in winning trophies, which, um, I mean, maybe that says something about, about me as a manager. But they beat Atalanta one year and beat Leipzig in the year we've just had. So did they just beat JD Meekin in the final? Is he still at the club, JD Meekin? We should probably search him up, shouldn't we, rather than JD Meekin. Meekin. JD, he's always oh, at Hoffenheim now. So he wouldn't have played in that cup final, unfortunately. They actually left quite a few years ago. So wouldn't have played in that cup final. So actually, I'm quite glad because I've been quite sad if we'd beaten JD Meekin in a final. So I think that probably rounds up everything. I'm not quite sure what else we want to look at. So that's it. That is the end of the Lincoln Loco 3. Finito, completely finished now. So there will be some videos coming out this week that I've pre-recorded, but I do need a bit of a break from Foot Manager for a week or so. Uh, you've probably seen it. I've been playing some Minecraft on streams recently to just have a break from Foot Manager. Um, the videos you're seeing are going to be pre-recorded as well because I just want to have a week of just not playing any Foot Manager at all. A little bit burnt out from playing it for so long, so I need like a little break to get recharged and get set for the new series. I'm going to launch some spoilers, not spoilers, leaks, leaks. I'll give you some clues. That's what I'm trying to say. I'll give you some clues as to the team that we are managing next on Twitter throughout the next week or so. So make sure you follow me on Twitter at TomFM underscore YT for that. But thank you very much for watching the Lincoln Loco 3. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.